Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome to another video uh, where we look at how we can build certain types and styles of sounds on the Korg monologue. So uh, today is all about chip tune. So what does chip tune mean? Well, it's a style of music which is reminiscent of uh, games consoles, typically games consoles from the 80s, um, early 90s. Um, and I guess it's born out of a kind of nostalgia for that, that the, the, the music that was in those computer games. And I can understand why. Um, certainly for me growing up, the Nintendo Entertainment System, the original NES, that was a major part of my, my musical world, actually. And this, the music that those games had were just incredible in a lot of cases. Um, before we get started, actually, I just want to plug another channel, uh, absolutely not affiliated whatsoever with them, um, but it's a really great channel if you're interested in computer game music and music theory. It's called 8-Bit Music Theory. Uh, incredible videos, um, uh, and, f and you can learn a lot about music theory at the same time as enjoying those great uh, old-school computer games uh, soundtracks. Anyway, uh, on with programming some sounds. We're on the initial patch here. Uh, so we're going to do two for the price of one here. Uh, we're going to do a, a kind of a bass sound and then a kind of a lead sound as well. Now, my frame of reference, as I mentioned, for chip tunes is, is very much the Nintendo Entertainment System. So um, think about the Nintendo Entertainment System. It had one triangle wave voice, which was typically used for basses, two square pulse wave voices, which typically get used for... Um, lead sounds and then also a noise source for percussion sounds uh, and you could kind of do PCM sample stuff so we can ignore the sample stuff. So if we want to approximate a NES bass sound really the main thing we need to do really is drop our octave and move over to the triangle wave. Immediately that's kind of evocative of those sort of um, uh, games consoles. And actually, it's nice because the monologue has, uh, has quite a buzzy triangle wave, so it, it kind of gives you that 8-bit sound anyway. That's more or less all we need to do to get kind of a chip tune uh, bass sound, actually. That's why this section is going to be pretty quick. One thing I might suggest that we do um, is go into the one-shot um, envelope and then just give ourselves a fairly medium decay sound decay at time. And that gives us quite a nice bass sound. The other thing that I would probably do uh, is um, in these cases to get that slightly wobbly sound uh, would be to set my LFO to slow into triangle and aim it at the pitch and then just find a nice setting for a bit of pitch wobble as well. And there's quite a nice 8-bit NES style bass sound. Pretty straightforward. Um, right, so let's initialize the patch and talk about the lead sound. So, okay, initialize patch. Uh, as I mentioned, the other main voice on the uh, NES was a square wave, or rather a pulse wave. And on the NES we had variable pulse width as well. And um, we even had proper sort of pulse width, mo pulse width modulation, which Nick Bat will be very happy about on the NES. So um, let's start with our lead sound with a straight square sound, and we're going to send the LFO over to uh, the shape, which on the square wave is going to give us pulse width modulation. Nice. Um, might also, just while we're here, uh, set our envelope into uh, the latch mode, have an instant attack probably, maybe a...
maybe not quite instant, that's nice. And then a decay which gives us just that little bit of tail at the end. Now one thing I'm not using here um, really at all is the filter, and that's because the NES anyway, uh, and most of the game's consoles that were available didn't have a, f uh, a filter. Uh, the main uh, exception to that would be the Commodore 64 with the SID chip, which had um, did have a filter on it. Uh, but for the most part, on chip tuning type stuff, you don't tend to use the filter. So um, let's uh, do something a little bit different here uh, to sort of finalise our uh, chip tuny kind of sound. Uh, and what I'm going to do is record a short sequence. Like that. Okay, um, now what I want to do is get it so that that sequence is just those four notes repeating again and again and again. So we're going to go into edit mode, we're going to make sure we're on sequencer edit here. We're going to go into the second light here where it says step length and we're going to drop that down to four. Like that. Now I actually want that to run a little bit faster, so I'm just going to crank that tempo, possibly just up to full. Just below full. And then I'm going to turn on the key trigger mode. So what this does is it starts the uh, sequence whenever you press a key, and it will keep it playing for as long as you press that key. And it will also change uh, or transpose where the sequence is happening based on what key you play. So if we start with the... Um, the note that we we're originally playing sounds exactly as it was, but as we start to play other things, Sounds really good as you start to go up. I've also turned up the shape knob on the VCO to get the pulse um, duty a little bit tighter so it's much more of a reedy, thin sound. That's how you power up on the monologue. So we've had a look at uh, a bass sound, uh, which is very straightforward, just the triangle wave really, and then also how we can um, uh, abuse or make use of the sequencer to get that kind of power up sound uh, when we're playing melodies as well. Anyway, I hope that was uh, fun and useful for you guys. If you enjoyed it, please hit that thumbs up button to give the video a like and also the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any um, future videos uh, on the Korg monologue and also other synthesizer stuff as well that's coming up. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I'll see you again soon.